Hi, I'm Brian with Bush Electronics. And here it is. The newest build out of our garage, a 2014 Ford sedan with all of the new features you could ask for, including a new Whalen Legacy light bar, a can control system, and the newest item from Satina, a TPO seat with center pull seat belts. One of the first things you may have noticed when I got out of the vehicle was the driver's side module was shut off on the light bar. With a weekend Legacy light bar like this and a can control feature built into it, Programming options such as shutting off modules when the driver's door opens are an option, as well as several others with the can control. But one of the nice things with that is, with a light bar that's as bright as this, in fact, it's on low power right now, so it doesn't wash out the camera, and it's still incredibly bright as it is right now. But when the driver opens his door, he isn't going to be blinded by any of the lights that are on that outside corner on it, increasing officer awareness and officer safety. When the door shuts, the modules come back to power again and the officer can continue doing what it is. So, let's take a walk around this vehicle and see all the features that we programmed into this. Before we take a walk around the vehicle, I wanted to take a second to show you the heart of the entire operation. And it's this, the Whalen Cantrell. The Cantrell is a relatively new siren and lighting controller out on the market, but the things that it will do are pretty much limitless. In this particular option, the customer had a few set specifications they wanted to meet, and this was a great idea for them. Now, although its application in this particular instance is law enforcement, it can be used on light and medium duty rescues, ambulance retros, as well as just about any lighting option you want to. I'm certainly sure we could use these on large fire apparatus if we wanted to. Built into a setup like this is not only a siren controller that's capable of powering two 100 watt sirens, but as well as lighting controls, timer functionality for weapon locks, load management systems uh, with the automated photo cell sensor on there, you can have lights automatically dim. With a temperature sensor in a canine vehicle, you can have it activate alarms, roll down windows, and even pop doors if you wanted to go that far with it. It has limitless number of inputs, outputs, uh, relatively speaking anyways. There are a number of limits on the inputs on there, but with expansion modules, you could have up to over 80 light controls on there individually. As it sits right now, it offers about 50, give or take. Uh, there are about 10 high output uh, readings on it, and then there's about uh, 35 to 40, depending upon how you wire your unit up. In this instance, the customer only used about 10 of the outputs on there, and then one of the high outputs uh, in this case, wired to the weapon lock on there. Options like this allow, if you saw earlier, when the passenger, or the driver's side door, excuse me, opened, it cut out modules on there. It also has park kill sense on there to kill the siren, and it can also change the patterns on it as well. One of the interesting things that this particular option is available for, and if you've read my blog series, you might know, is that if this car was the lead car in a chase, you could have a pursuit button, per se, on the controller head, when the officer pressed that, it would now dim the rear of the light bar, as well as hook up to the directional control, per se. So as the officer direction that the chase might be moving to the right or to the left, the arrow stick would mimic the functionality on it. Not only will it do the arrow stick that's built into the bar, but if you had a separate TA module, it's capable of handling it. So there's no need for a load manager, a charge guard timer, any type of ancillary systems on there. So if you needed to have a specific uh, temperature control to pop a door on there, this particular unit is capable of doing it with an add-on to it. Uh, the options literally are limitless. With a weekend module, it opens up a lot of the uh, power outputs on there that you may need for a standard light bar. And that's why this particular customer used so few. This light bar is, again, like I said, a weekend control module. Although wiring was a little more challenging than some of our other vehicles on there, in the end, it became pretty easy. Instead of having to have switches do various things onto it, uh, on, on say a 295, which is, again, a, a great unit, it's economical, but as far as progressive options you want to be able to do to it, this really is the only way you can go with it. Uh, again, in a nutshell, it, it can do some pretty amazing things with it. It is mounted on top of a Satina trunk tray, and although you don't see a lot on it right now, the customer may have modems, uh, potentially a radio install onto it later on. This is the first Satina trunk tray we've installed, and we've been relatively happy with it. It goes in pretty well, and it's relatively durable. Full extension slides allows just about anything you may need to service accessible and secured inside the vehicle.
So enough about this, let's take a walk around the car and see all the other features we've installed into it. So here's the front of the vehicle. Again, the light bar's on low power mode to keep the lights uh, from washing off the camera. There are ion side kits installed into the side location over here. The customer ordered the Vertex is already as the port package and the headlights, and then lint trees and the grill that we installed as well as the siren speaker. One of the great things about Cantro controlling a lot of this is it gives us the ability to slow down a lot of the lights on it. The rear pattern is still the same as it was on position one, other than the fact that we have amber going in the center area with the TA activated already. Uh, Cantro allows you to have certain inputs onto it, so if I'm in park in position two, I want you to turn on a TA going left, right, center, diverge, etc. Being a duo up on top, they're red right now in position three, they'll white flash. When the officer stops during a traffic stop, if per se that's what the, the ball was he was going to, he can turn on the takedowns. Now the takedowns are right now the center two modules that are not activated. With the second press of the takedown button, and I'll show you that in a second, it will turn the entire front of the bar into a takedown. Now, that's a great option with the, uh, the legacy duo bars that they offer right now. We've always heard officers say, wouldn't it be great if my car did this? With Cantrell, it really gives us a lot of the options onto it. One of those things we often heard was officers say, well, wouldn't it be great if when I pulled up into an intersection responding to an alarm, and I change my siren tone to gain the attention of some drivers that might be distracted and make myself more visible as I approach the intersection, audibly anyways, the lighting pattern never changed. Cantrell is a different story. On this particular unit, we have whale set as a standard flash pattern. As the officer may approach an intersection, he may press yelp or pierce. And when he does that, the lighting pattern will change to a more eye-catching uh, display on there. And it's not only just the light bar, it's the entire lighting setup as a whole. When the vehicle was going in the park, it'll shut off the siren, and it can slow down the patterns on it. Right now, the vehicle is in park, and I've disabled that feature on it just for the video's sake on it. So I'm going to go in, I'll turn on the traffic advice, or I'm sorry, I'll turn on the takedowns as well as show you what the siren looks like as well. The siren will, will cause the lights to look like as well. Again, you'll notice when I open the door, the module is cut out. And then when I get in, I come back on again. came to us saying they were going to be doing a lot of traffic details onto it. And here's a great option, not only for traffic details, but potentially if the car might be used for, say, a DWI patrol, DWI checkpoints, stops, etc. You can have the lights set up there so that people know you're there. In some states, it's required to have lights illuminated on the vehicle solid, or in this case, it's what they call steady flash. The lights stay on solid, and then about every three to five seconds, they're going to just flutter, just ever so slightly, so that you know the vehicle's there. Like I said, some states require that by law. So to make your vehicle compliant with some of the upcoming uh, changes to some of your state's regulations on there, that's an option for you. <laughs> You'll notice, if you can see them, the grill lights have slowed down considerably, as have the lights in the back. Uh, and again, you'll notice, the first press was outside lights only, the second press brought most of the light bar up to power, as well as some of the other lights on the pattern on there. Let me show you what the takedowns do. So there's press one on the takedown. There's our standard takedown modules. And then on press two, it gives us the entire front of the light bar. These modules here are on the, the uh, outer edge control on there. And if I wanted to, I could turn those modules on by pressing the alley light. And that module is out because the driver's door is open, driver's door gets closed. 
more than likely it's probably washing out the camera pretty bad right now, but as you can see, it illuminates the entire front of the vehicle really, really well. If you're having trouble seeing me and seeing the vehicle, odds are anybody in a car you're trying to make a traffic stop on are also having a hard time seeing you. Let's take a look at some of the other features on this car as well. I have cruise mode set on it right now. Cruise mode is an option with all of well and light bars and, and well and light heads. Uh, but on this particular car, we decided to use it. It's going on to a college campus. And a lot of times we've gotten reports from officers saying, I've patrolled an area X, Y, Z amount of times, but people still complain that we're not visible enough. And we're seeing a lot of departments, not so much locally as we are nationwide, <coughs> instituting a cruise light policy where the vehicle, no matter at what time, day or night, these cruise lights will go on. It's a very low intensity. This is regular power on them. This is not low power option on it. That's cruise lights always with it. I have the corner module set on this, but with a Cantrell setup and a weekend bar, I can have the entire light bar become cruise lights if I wanted to. So it's just a very, very ever so slight flutter onto it. Now, although in this particular instance I'm showing it on a police vehicle, Cantrell really is a great option for fire vehicles, especially uh, command vehicles, chase vehicles, light and medium duty rescues, or squad vehicles that you may have, a fly car. One of the things that we always tell our customers is, those small vehicles, although you may not purchase them directly from a fire truck manufacturer, they're still held to the NFPA standards. Meaning that when the vehicle goes into park, for example, any forward facing white lights must shut off. Now we've always said to people, well, I'll just go to position two. And that's the way a lot of upfitters, including ourselves, have always wired them. However, in an instance where society is always very quick to, to throw lawsuits out there, God forbid an accident was to ever occur because the vehicle or the operator never put the, the slide switch over to position two. And the white lights maintained uh, illuminating while the vehicle was in a park mode on there. It's a liability we don't want to pass on to our customers. So we're suggesting it as an option to make sure you can do that. On top of that, this has load manager involved in it. The vehicle is off right now, and it will be sensing whether or not the voltage is going up or down on it. So if the voltage was to drop to a certain point, let's say uh, we set the threshold at 11 volts, as to where we would need to make it so that the vehicle sets off its first tone. When it hits 11 volts, it can begin to shut down lights, as well as send an audible tone over the siren speaker. Not a, not a constant audible tone, but a very quick chirp over the siren speaker to let the officer or the driver of the vehicle know, hey, you probably should start me back up again. If no one responds to it after that, again, the vehicle voltage begins to drop down. And we'll say maybe at 10 and a half to 10 volts is where we say that's our threshold for not being able to start the vehicle back up again. It can shut all the systems down and send a longer or louder siren tone, depending upon the, the preference of the vehicle. Not only can we do it that way, but it can also begin to shut down ancillary equipment on there. So for a command vehicle, if you have a computer, a modem, uh, you're charging radios, portable radios, a suction unit, flashlights, it can begin to take power away from a lot of those units. Overall, it's a really, really great system that Wellens come out with. We are the only dealer here locally in central New York, actually in most of upstate New York, that is capable of programming the well and Cantrell on there. If you have any questions, we'd be more than happy to talk about it. Great thing about a well and Cantrell is, is that after delivery of it, later on down the road, you think, wouldn't it be great if we can fix it? It's very simple. With just plugging a computer into it, we can change the program with the click of a mouse. That's it for the well and uh, equipment on there. There is the console in there, a Havis console with the Cantrell system on there. We'll show that in just a second. One of the other things we're really excited to show you guys is the Satina equipment we put into it. And that focus is in the back seat. So let's take a look at it. We brought the car outside to show you more of the stuff in the back. Unfortunately, inside the garage, it was much darker on the uh, video than we liked. We brought it outside to show you what we've done in the back as far as all the Satina equipment goes onto it. Now, one of the first things you probably noticed was the door guards, as well as the polycarbonate window barriers on there. The nice thing that Satina designed into these door guards is that they, they fit right over the stock door panel. They're a TPO plastic, a thermoplastic polyophilin. Uh, essentially, it's a number of uh, plastics mixed together, polycarbonates, uh, a couple of carbon fibers, rubber. Essentially, it's a very, very durable plastic. It won't fade with UV light or get brittle. So if you've ever used some of the plastic seats 
of older years that over the times of being sitting outside for so long, they would get brittle, they would fade into it. These will always look as good as they did uh, the day you installed them onto it. And like I said, they go right over top of the existing door panels with a couple of uh, plastic push pins. So there's no need to store any of the old door panels on there. Now the other nice thing is you can see the seat. The seat is a TPO seat, same material as the door guards on there, and this actually goes right over the existing back seats. Now uh, there's no need to remove the bottom seat or the top seat uh, once everything's installed into it. The one thing you will see as well is the seat belts no longer come from the outboard to the inboard side of the, the occupant on there. It makes it much, much safer as the officer goes to insert somebody into the vehicle. He's no longer reaching across somebody that might be in the back. All he has to do is come over here to the stowed location and buckle the person in. And now the person is safely secured in the back. And the danger that the officer may have faced years past where he had to reach across to come inside to fumble to get the seatbelts are eliminated. We also have a Satina partition with a weapon system installed in here. Uh, stock from Ford, it does come with three seatbelts in the back. With the center pole option, you lose one seatbelt, uh, but uh, that's par for the course for this particular setup. With the weapons cut out, the center seat is really no longer an option to put somebody in it. Uh, this is the extra large, the XL partition that uh, Satina makes. And like I had shown before, I'm 6'1", and although it's a little tighter on this particular vehicle than it was on the utility, uh, I can fit relatively comfortably inside the back of the car. Uh, my knees aren't impinging up against the cage at all. Like I said, it, it's relatively comfortable for being in the back of a patrol vehicle. Uh, outside of the fact that comfort really may not necessarily be a concern for you, the ease of getting somebody my size, potentially a little bigger, into the back of a small sedan car like this really is where the safety increase comes into it. Let's take a look up in the front real quick and we'll show you what some of the other options exist are. So we've installed a vehicle specific Havis console and although this particular customer only had the siren controller up here, the lighting controller and siren controller in the vehicle, uh, this customer doesn't use mobile radios, they burst off all portable radios and that to save some money. Which is a fine option onto it, we did give him the uh, uh, small cutout in the, in the uh, console to be able to stow uh, pencils, pens, any business cards that they may have, the cup holders. We do have the uh, armrest with the printer installed inside of it. And although there is no computer right now in the vehicle, the customer intends to get one within the next year or so. So we figured why not go with this right off the bat. They'll have to purchase one at some point anyways. And there is a weapons cut out in the back uh, with the, the EOTech bracket from Satina for uh, an AR-15 uh, with EOTech sights on it. One of the things we did with this setup uh, with the controller on it, it's like I had mentioned, there's 18 push buttons on there, and although the top eight are usually dedicated for radio rebroadcast, standby, siren, air horn, etc., you can program them in any myriad of options you want to. Uh, the other 10 we would use for lighting controls as well as a progressive slide switch on there. Each button has the ability to do upwards of nine uh, presses. So each press will give you a different option depending upon how you have it programmed. In our instance, the only setups we really have with that would be like takedown, where the takedown on one press is going to give you the standard takedown option, and then a second press is going to give you uh, all of the entire bar on The same thing we did for the alley lights on there. With Cantrol, it also gives you timed output circuits as well. In fact, you can do several of your outputs as timed or delayed. In this case, we decided to use the Cantrol to control our weapon lock system as well. And the nice thing about that is the traditional weapon locks are just a push button that you would usually try to hide in an inconspicuous location in the vehicle. Well, officers, if they would be switching back and forth onto it, would try to have to figure out where on the vehicle they might be. With Cantrol, it gives us the option to place one legend, and that's always going to be the vehicle unlock onto it. However, you can set a couple of parameters to make sure that the vehicle weapon is only released when the officer calls for it, and only that particular officer. No, no one that gets in the vehicle outside your departmental officers are going to be able to release that weapon system on there. Now, although I won't discuss what we did for our particular customer, Options might exist as requiring the vehicle to be in park and the officer press a defrost button uh, or something as crazy as turning on the right turn signal and then depressing the button. Now in this case we have it set for only a few seconds so you have to be very quick between the pressing the legend and reaching back to grab the weapon. However you can have it set for just about any length of time you want to. So 
so that if the vehicle weapon was in the trunk, the driver's door would have to be open, and he'd have to press the button, and it would give him 20 seconds, he said, he'll walk back, open the trunk, and get the vehicle weapon out. Uh, they're all options you can do with it. Uh, if you didn't want the weapon to be released while the vehicle was in motion, for whatever reason, you could say that the vehicle must be in park, and etc. Like, like we had mentioned with Cantrol, there really is an unlimited amount of options. They do call it the can troll. It can do just about anything you want for it. As we mentioned earlier in the video, Bush Electronics is one of the only Cantrol certified shops in upstate New York, so if you have any questions regarding the features and capabilities of it, why don't you give us a call or check out our website at bushelectronics.net. Overall, I think it's another great job by our install team here at Bush Electronics. From all of us here, thanks for watching.